A lot of mothers are actually feeling quite insecure about their knowledge on their children and their family and their parenting. So generally we've got a lot of parents going out there looking for answers from other people. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to become your own parenting expert. And how to answer your own questions that you generally put out there to other people. Okay, so in this current age of information overload and um, even here on this channel, or this podcast, wherever you're watching this or hearing this information, there's a lot of information always coming at mothers, always external to themselves. And there's often a lot of experts claiming to know the right way to raise your children or the right way to parent your children. And it brings us right out of ourselves. We become very insecure and we seek answers outside of ourselves because that's what we're told to believe. That's what we're told to believe right from the time that we get pregnant on pretty much that the experts outside of ourselves hold the answers. And it's even before motherhood. We're generally raised in a society where we get the answers outside of ourselves. We don't generally get taught to trust our own intuition. But in reality, the bottom line is you know your child. You know yourself, you know your family, and you know the situation, the unique situation that you're in currently with the people involved. And that's something an outspired expert will never have and will never know as well as you do, ever. You also have within you a really strong instinctual drive. Now all of us have this, um, but mothers get reconnected back to it even more strongly when they become mothers, and it often gets called mother's intuition. It's available to everyone, but we hold within us a place where we can access our inner truth or a deeper truth that feels right to us, that is our truth, and is our truth for us and our family. And when you can access that, then you have so much more of an empowerment around your own experience of motherhood. It's clearer for you what solutions you need to enact. It's clearer for you when you need to make decisions. It allows you to step out around other mothers with much more confidence in yourself and your family's approaches. And it allows you to look outward back at that information that's out there, because we're not saying that's bad. That can expose you to new ideas, new solutions. But when you can look at it through the lens of your own truth, and understand what's true for you, then you can pick and choose. That serves as a filter. And you can understand clearly, this is for me, and this isn't for me, I can let that bit go. So there's all these gifts that come from cultivating um, a connection with your own inner truth, or your mama wisdom, as it were. And there's, um, it's a journey to do this, and there's a lot of techniques and ways that you can do it. But the one we want to share with you today is an awesome tool for getting started, and it's an incredibly powerful tool for any decision making. And mothers are making decisions all the time, every day, multiple times a day. So this is something that you can bring in all throughout your day. And we encourage you when you're getting started to do it with smaller decisions. And the reason that we say that is when it's a big decision and there's a lot of emotion charged around it, there will be a lot of voices vying for your attention. And it can be harder to hear and you need to access some different techniques sometimes to be able to clear those voices down. So if you start in smaller decisions, do we want to go to the park or the library? Do we want to stay home today? Do What do we want to have for lunch? Like all those sorts of smaller decisions, um, you'll build up the ability to recognize and hear the truth within you and then it will be accessible to you more and more and more. Mm. And you're also, together with that ability is that confidence. That confidence will come. Absolutely. And the recognition of what feels like truth to you. So the exercise that we're going to share with you in this video, which is a, a, this starting point that you can choose to take on, is how to feel a yes and a no in your body. Your body is always communicating with you. Um, through your, your inner, deeper wisdom is communicating through your body 
all the time. It's, it's just one of those techniques, one of those things that's constantly happening in the background. And when you become aware of it, you will be able to feel what is a yes, and you'll be able to feel what is a no from your deeper inner wisdom. So we call this feeling a yes and a no in your body. And the more that you can feel it and recognize it, the more you will feel and recognize it. It's kind of a one of those cyclic chicken and an egg things. But as you get started, you'll feel it more and more clearly. So what we're going to do now is take you through feeling a yes and no in your body. And for this exercise, because your awareness is on it and we're taking you there in a very specific way, we're kind of amplifying the feeling of the yes and the no because we want you to really feel it. But be aware that that same feeling, it might be toned down a little bit, but that same feeling is always running. That yes and no, yes and no is always there. And your body will actually, or your inner wisdom, will actually respond to your questions and to your issues faster than your mind. Often we choose to ignore it, we'll hear a yes or we'll hear a no, but we'll allow the rational mind to kick in and override us and complicate issues and keep going. And it might sound louder, the mind, it might, it, it's, it's what we're used to listening to first. Mm. So this is about learning to listen to something else. Absolutely. And so we start with the yes and a no. We just start there because they're the ones that we can bring it down to the simplest form. So Kay is going to lead you through it. Sit and do it with us. It only takes a minute. And just feel what your yes and your no is. Mm. Okay, so before we do this exercise, the first step is to breathe. And it's important to do this because this is a practice that goes beyond your mind. And generally, especially when there's lots of decisions to be made, we're up in our head. So take a breath. And breathe, with your breath, just drop down into your body. As you're breathing, relax. Relaxing brings you into your body. And now, think of a statement that is an absolute yes for you. A yes that, it, it's just a 100% yes. It couldn't be, um, debatable. For example, I love my children with all my heart or whatever it is for you. And then turn that into a question and ask yourself, do I love my children with all my heart? And then feel the yes in your body. Feel how it feels. Notice where you feel the yes in your body. And let yourself know, even say it out loud, oh I feel the yes in my stomach or wherever you feel it. And then notice how it feels, like does it have a particular texture, does it have a particular colour, does it have a particular sound, is it spoken. Um, just get really clear with all your senses on how your yes feels. Because this is your yes in your body, this is the yes you'll recognise whenever you ask any other questions if it's true for you. So if you were to hold your yes in your hands, how would it feel to you? Mm. And if you were to pick it up and smell it, what would you smell? What would you hear? Just really get to know your yes. Mm. And now we're going to move on to your no. So now it's time to think of a statement that is an absolute no for you. like in. In comparison to the one about loving your children with all of your heart, it's, um, I hate my children and I never want to see them again. Mm. So that's or a statement that would go against your most sacred values. Mm. Yes. And turn that one into a question and ask yourself, do I hate my children and do I run a, want to run away from them, for example? Mm. Or another way to do that is imagine yourself doing it. Mm. Yeah. Imagine yourself doing that, that no thing. <laughs> and then feel the no in your body. Feel where it is in your body. Acknowledge where it is in your body. Even place your hands where it is in your body. And notice the texture of it, the colour, the sound, the images that come. And as Lisa said, how does it feel to hold it, to be with it? And just really get a sense for your no with all of your senses. Because this is the no that you're going to recognise when you ask other questions. 
Hey, so that was feeling your yes and your no. And that was your, and probably your first <laughs> experiment with that. And you want to get to know that more and more. And there's a few ways you can do that. The first is obviously just keep trying it. Ask yourself a question, feel for your yes and no. Okay? As many times as you can do that, because the more familiar you come with, become with it over time, the easier it is to hear it. And the second thing that you can do is you can notice for the next day or two any time that you are feeling a, a huge yes in your body like this is a definite yes, life is great, life is amazing or this is a total yes for me intellectually then drop into your body straight away and go right how does this feel? Check in then how does it feel and feel the yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and the same with the no. If you're having a crappy, shitty day, <laughs> and there are no, 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 drop in, feel your no, get to know the no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they might have a few different flavors, and the more you connect with them, the more you'll just know. Oh, that's that. That's in that no category, mm -hmm. and that's in that yes category. Mm -hmm. And this can actually be really helpful, also in when you're actually going out there and looking at all the information that's in the world, mm -hmm. like. It is valuable to get um, to get tools from elsewhere, like to look at parenting books, to listen to people like us, to, <laughs> to actually engage with all these things. And when you're listening to something, like listening to a practice, listening to a strategy, a theory, um, run it through the yes and no, like um, actually run what someone else is suggesting through your yes and no, so you know whether it's something you can let go or whether it's something you want to follow. Mm. And any time that you can honour your yes and your no, you'll become stronger and stronger at hearing it. Mm. And I think that's something that maybe it's an extension, if you want the bonus points for this, is to actually honour the yes or the no answer, because that's the whole other piece. It is. So, until next time. Get to know your own unique yeses and noes and enjoy. Bye. Bye.